Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of analyzing three German stocks by dissecting their financial statements and analyzing their financial ratios so we can determine if they're a buy or a sell. The three stocks we're going to look at trade on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, which is the largest stock exchange in Germany. All the numbers are in euros. The first company we're going to look at is ATOS Software. This is a provider of technology and consulting solutions for professional workforce management. Workforce management is meant to increase the productivity of a company's employees. Let's get started with the model. Their market cap is 986 million euros. They're trading at 124 a share and they have 8 million shares outstanding. The way you value a company, you estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that back to today's dollars. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And you can see this company has positive, pretty consistent free cash flow each year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they also have positive and growing net income each year. Revenue looks pretty good. It grows from 50 million euros to 71 million. And their net profit margins also look pretty good, between 17 and 19 percent. Net profit margin is net income divided by revenue, which how well you convert revenue into profit. In 2019, they converted 19 percent of their revenue into profit, which means 81 percent went towards expenses. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. You can see that grows every year. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses that are directly related to making the company's products. That's 21 million in 2019, and their gross profit was 50 million. And their gross profit also improves each year. Below that is operating expenses at 31 million in 2019, and their operating income was 20 million dollars. Their operating income in 2016 was 13.6 million, and it grew every year. So all the numbers look pretty good and strong. Below that is the interest they pay in the debt minus the interest they received from their investments. Then they pay taxes. So their net income was 13 million in 2019. This is their statement of cash flows and on the top is operating cash flow. The way you calculate operating cash flow, you take net income and then you adjust for the non-cash items on the income statement. The most common non-cash item is depreciation and you also adjust for changes in working capital. That means changes in accounts receivables, changes in accounts payables. And the way you calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow minus capex. They don't have much in capex, so they have positive and pretty healthy free cash flow each year. Let's look at the capital structure. 11 million of debt, 25 million of equity. They pay 2% interest on their debt, and cost of debt is 1.3%. To calculate cost of debt, it's interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. And 31% of that capital structure is debt, which means 69% is equity. Cost of equity is 12.6%. To calculate cost of equity, we use the capital asset pricing model. And part of the CAPM formula is the beta. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. So the stock is a little more volatile than the market. The market as a whole has a beta of one. This has a beta of 1.34. So their WAC is 9%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for. That's 674 million euros. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of 547 million euros. So we divide that by 8 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $69. They're so trading at 124, so they're trading at an 80% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply, Wall Street values the company at 46 euros, a little lower than me. So it looks like the stock peaked about 180, 190 euros. But it's come down quite a bit, looks like back in March like most stocks. It's come up a little since the bottom, so it is trading at a pretty big discount from its all-time high, but it's trading at a premium according to my model and according to Simply Wall Street. It appears most companies pay annual dividends in Germany, when in the US we usually pay quarterly dividends. And the last dividend they paid was $1.28 in May, so their dividend yield is 1%. 
to calculate dividend yield, it's just annual dividend over stock price. So it's $1.28 over what they're trading at, 124. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE is 15, the median is 14.8. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. Their ratio is 72.8, which is much worse than the median and average. Average price of sales is 5.5, the median is 2.2. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They're 13.8, so they're doing a bit worse than a median and average. The average price to book is 4.7, the median is 2.3. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're at 39.7, so their ratio is much worse than the median and average. The average interest coverage ratio is 12.4, the median is 3.9. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. There are 87.3, so they can easily cover their interest payments. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes. It's on the income statement called operating income. Average ROE is 11%, the median is 12%. ROE is net income over equity. They're at 55%, so they're doing much better than the median and average. Equity is assets minus liabilities on the balance sheet. The average current ratio is 1.8, the median is 1.3. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. Their current assets are mostly cash of 29 million. They also have 4 million of inventory. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos of 16 companies in the same industry as ATOS, and ATOS is right here. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're doing much worse in PE. They are doing a little better in price to sales ratio than the average. They're doing worse in price to book. Their current ratio is about average at 2.5, average is 2.6. The ROE is really good at 55%, much higher than the average. They're doing a little worse in debt at 31%. Their market cap when you convert it to US dollars is 1.2 billion, average is 38 billion. And they do pay a dividend. Most companies in this industry do not pay a dividend. The next company we're gonna look at is CompuGroup Medical. And this company provides software to improve health and the quality of life. The company builds bridges between physicians, pharmacies, health insurers, laboratories, and hospitals to help them provide optimum care. Let's get started with the model. The market cap is 3.8 billion euros. They're trading at 76.25 a share and they have 54 million shares outstanding. Their free cash flow looks pretty healthy and strong each year. Net income also looks positive and fairly consistent. And then revenue grows each year from 560 million euros to 746 million. This is the company's income statement. You can see in 2019, they had 30 million more in revenue than in 2018 but they had 18 million less in cost of revenue than in 2018. But their operating expenses were much higher in 2019 than 2018. 70 million more, with only 30 million more revenue. So even though their revenue was lower in 2018, they had higher net income compared to 2019. But their numbers overall look pretty good so far. This is the statement of cash flows, and to calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow, which is on top, minus capital expenditures. And this company is a lot more in capital expenditures than the last company because of the type of business they're in. But they have positive and pretty healthy free cash flow each year. And this company uses a lot more debt than the last company we looked at. The last company we looked at, ATOS, didn't have any debt issued the last four years. This company issued 70 million in 2016, 85 million, 297 million, and 188 million. But you should look below that repayment of debt. It looks like they're mostly rolling their debt. So when debt is due, companies usually don't pay it off, they issue new debt. So it looks like they paid off 64 million. In order to pay it off, they had to issue 70 million. And they repurchased some capital stock. Capital stock is either common or preferred stock. So they repurchased 25 million in 2018 and 41 million in 2019. A good sign is a company that is not issuing too much stock or debt. They're paying it back, and that's how you grow the company. Instead of paying dividends, you could just buy back stock. Let's look at the capital structure. 511 million of debt, 259 million of equity. The interest rate they pay in their debt is 1.2%. Cost of debt is only 0.74%. And they have 66% debt in that capital structure, so they're a bit leveraged. 34% equity, and their WAC is 3.18%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. 
that's 3.4 billion euros. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of 3.3 billion euros. We divide that by 54 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $61. They're trading at $76, so they're trading at a 26% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street's at $47, so they're saying the stock is more overvalued than me. It looks like the stock price has been coming up little by little every year and it's at its all-time high. The company pays a small dividend, 0.66% dividend yield. They pay 50 cents for each share each year. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a P.E. ratio of 62.2, which is a lot higher than the median and average. Price to sales of 5.5, which is in line with the average. Price to book is 15.8, which is a lot higher than the median and average. Interest coverage ratio is 17.4, so they can easily cover their interest payments. They have a solid ROE at 25%. Their current ratio is 1, so they can almost cover their current liabilities. Their current assets are 44 million of cash, 27 million of inventory. And when you see restricted cash, that's just cash that's set aside for a specific purpose. And the only other company I did in the same industry as Compu Group is Teladoc. And Teladoc's ratio is right here. And Compu Group has a better PE, price to sales, and price to book. Teladoc has a really high current ratio. Compu Group is doing really well in ROE at 25%. Teladoc is negative because they have negative earnings. Compu Group has a lot of debt. Teladoc is much lower in that category. And Teladoc is much bigger at 17 billion market cap. When you convert Compu Group to US dollars, they have 4.5 billion. And Teladoc doesn't pay a dividend, Compu Group does. The last company we're going to look at is Nemechek. Nemechek is a vendor of software for architects, engineers, and the construction industry. The company develops and distributes software for planning, designing, building, and managing buildings and real estate, as well as for media and entertainment. Let's get started with the model. They have a market cap of 7.4 billion euros, they're trading at 63.90 a share, and they have 116 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. Free cash flow looks pretty good. It's positive and pretty much growing every year. Net income also looks really good. And their revenue grows quite a bit each year, 14 to 17% a year. So this is the company's income statement, and you can see the revenue grows every year. Their gross profit improves every year. And it looks like their operating income also improves each year. So all the numbers look pretty good and solid year to year. And this is the statement of cash flows. On top is operating cash flow. Then there's capital expenditures, and the difference between those two numbers is your free cash flow, and that looks pretty good each year. They don't issue much debt. They only issued $38 million in 2016, but they've been paying off debt each year. This is a good sign of a healthy, growing, profitable company when they're able to pay down debt without taking on new debt. Let's look at the capital structure. $258 million of debt, $349 million of equity. They pay 1.22% interest on their debt and cost of debt is only 1%. So it looks like the interest rates are really low in Germany. The weight of debt is 43%, the weight of equity is 57%, cost of equity is 14.15%, and their WAC is 8.56%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for, that's 5.8 billion euros. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of 4.7 billion euros. We divide that by 116 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 41 euros. They're trading at 64 euros, so they're trading at a 56% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street is pretty close to me. They're at 35 euros a share, so they're a little lower. So it looks like the stock was trading below 30 euros a few years ago, but the price has doubled since then, and it's almost at its all-time high currently. The company pays a small dividend, 0.44% dividend yield. Let's look at the financial ratios. Their PE is 58, which is a bit high. They also have a pretty high price to sales of 13.3, and price to book is also high at 21.2. They can easily cover their interest payments. Their interest coverage ratio is 39. They have a good ROE at 36%, and they can just cover their current liabilities, 1.1 current ratio. Most of their current assets are cash, 210 million of cash. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos of 16 companies in the same industry as Nemechek. If Nemechek has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE, better in price of sales, 
Worse in price to book. Current ratio, they are doing worse, but they're above one, so that's okay. Much better in ROE. They're a lot higher in debt than average. They're at 43%. When you convert their market cap to US dollars, they're 8.8 .8 billion, which is much lower than the average. And they do pay a dividend, unlike most companies in this industry. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.